Adams. I'm the program manager for the pharmacy reengineering program within within product development in VA. Um, this, Dr. Anthracite invited us to, to join this meeting today to give you a, an update where we are with with Prees and the products that we're we both have are preparing to deploy, as well as developing. Some of you may have been around last year when we did a similar presentation, and we've made, as you'll see, quite a bit of progress since that time. We have a number of, of members of the PREED team on this call um, to support this effort. We're going to have uh, Grant Tucker, who's the project manager for our medication order checking healthcare application, or MOCA, um, that provides the order checking functionality within the existing VISTA application. Grant's on board. We have Alex Albu, who is one of our architects. We have Ron Rusbacki, who is our lead M developer. And then we have Lena Bertusis, who is one of our business analysts. They are available to describe the basic architecture and interfaces that we've developed um, for the MOCA product and how it interacts with VISTA. We're going to go into a um, discussion of our pharmacy product system, National, which will be replacing the National Drug File eventually. We have Russ Ferry, who is the project manager for that effort, who will be um, leading that discussion. And then we'll have a few minutes afterwards for some um, question and answer period um, if you guys do have some things you want to discuss further. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Alex Albu, who will be starting off with the, the MOCA information. Alex, go ahead, please. Thank you, Mike. Um, so I've put together a few slides that uh, hopefully will, uh, will help this conversation get going. Uh, they're just uh, high-level uh, depictions of uh, the architecture of our applications. Um, uh, could I interrupt a sec? You, we've got, um, I can see a whole desktop of somebody, or mine, but I'm, I'm not getting, you're not in the middle of my desktop, I guess is the problem. On screen resolution. Uh, okay. It looks like we're going to have to do something about that then. I don't know how to do that. Let's see. I'm sorry, but we can't, I didn't realize that. Um, yeah, you need to produce a screen resolution to match the projector. All right. If, if, if you have trouble with that, I can I can try to share just the presentation. It's not on your end, I don't think. Okay, we're going to try to change in the display resolution. You can go ahead and talk, and I'll just try to do it while you talk. Okay. So the, the new architecture of the uh, pharmacy systems consists of a, a number of uh, loosely coupled applications, uh, both both in Vista and. Uh, uh, some newer ones uh, that are J2EE based. Um, we, we will focus, uh, our, most of our conversation will be focused probably on the lower half of this diagram. Uh, that's where the actual order checks are happening. The upper half deals with uh, um, applications that we use for um, updating the drug database. I don't know. Um, how, how relevant they are, but um, we've included them for completeness, and uh, we, we can talk about those too if, uh, if uh, there's an interest in that. Um, so with, with the new, um, uh, with, with this new application, with the new architecture, all uh, order checking calls in Vista go through a common API. Uh, there was a big encapsulation effort and uh, what, what happens then uh, with, those, uh, with those calls is that uh, they are basically being uh, packed, the, the parameters for the calls are being packed into an XML message, uh, which is being sent to the G2E side of, of MOCA. Uh, this is um, a, a, an application that exposes web services for um, uh, doing order checks. Uh, the, the communication is done uh, via the uh, Healthy Vet Web Services client. Um, on, the, on the G2EE side, uh, messages are being unmarshaled and uh, based on their content, uh, the appropriate FDB APIs are being uh, invoked for uh, performing the order checks. Uh, the, the data used in the order checks is both um, F, FDB provided data as well as uh, custom uh, data created by uh, VA pharmacists. The, the results 
from the STB API calls are then uh, being marshaled back into XML messages, which are uh, uh, returned to, uh, to the Vista caller. Um, Ron can Ian probably provide uh, more details about uh, the mechanics of um, how that happens in, uh, uh, in Vista. I, uh, I do have an, another, another slide that provides a little, just a little more detail on, on the lower half of the previous diagram. Uh, just shows in a little more detail the, the flow of the of the messages. Um, and I also have um, a few sample uh, XML messages that uh, that Ron provided um, for order check for uh, drug drug interaction, uh, order checks, and uh, and dosing. And so we, we can look at those as well. Um, I'm, with that, I'm going to uh, ask uh, maybe Ron to, to, to discuss a little bit about the VISTA side of things to, um, to provide some more details about uh, um, how, how the, the, the messages are being constructed and how, how the responses are being processed. Sure. Um, I'll talk a little bit about the VISTA end. Uh, in VISTA, there's basically, there's two distinct calls that we make to first data bank. One call is for the enhanced order checks, which includes the drug interaction and duplicate therapy. And the other call is for the new dosing checks. They're separate calls. Uh, the input data is initially built in a month's temp global, which contains all the information obviously necessary to, to do each order check. And then cool. while we're still within VISTA, we invoke some kernel APIs, which takes that a month's tempo when and formats it into the XML. Then, then as Alex said, we use healthy but web services to go out and eventually get to the first data bank uh, DIP, which is Drug Information Framework, and uh, perform the order check. It comes back through healthy but web services and XML format, and uh, then uh, we parse that out. We we set that in a temp global that is uh, the, for the for, so each calling application, whether it's inpatient, outpatient, or CPRS, can process and, and do whatever they want to do with those order checks. Uh, the, ident the identifying piece of information that goes to first data bank to match up the drugs is the GCN sequence number. Um, when we build the input to send to first data bank, that number is retrieved from the VA product file, which is a national drug file file uh, that, from the, what, that the local drug is matched to. If a local drug is not matched to the national drug file or it's matched to an entry in the national drug file that doesn't have a GCN sequence number, then no order checks can be done on that drug. Um, the national drug file group, I believe, will, will stop updating the drug interactions file for the VISTA order checks around the time that MOCA 2.0 is rolled out, and, and that's the first, uh, first dosing piece of our rollout, uh, though I don't think a firm date has been established yet. Uh, in fact, one of the MOCA patches for 1.0 deletes the VISTA option that allows local interactions to be created or modified since, since basically once you install MOCA 1.0, uh, there is no use anymore for that local drug interaction file. That's, that's pretty much just my brief update on the VISTA side of things. Okay, so, so I think that, that was our, our short uh, high-level uh, presentation of the application, and uh, uh, we since we didn't know exactly what you were interested in, we wanted to keep it short and, uh, and allow uh, as much time as possible for, uh, for questions. Uh, I, I don't know how we want to proceed further. Do, do we want to have Russ talk about the future of NDF, or uh, do we want to, to, to break here for questions? Yeah, uh, Dr. Anthocide, do you... <coughs> Does anyone in your room there have any questions at this time that you want to go ahead and start covering? A question. Is this, uh, this is Rick Marshall. I have a question for you. Is this, um, is this framework running an alpha test at any production sites? Hello, did, could you hear him? Yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're asking whether, whether we're running in production anywhere? Whether you're in alpha test yet? Yeah, Rick, we we completed our testing, our field testing, and have um, are beginning our deployment of the Mocha version one application. We're having a phase deployment. I believe there's a total of five phases. 
That deployment has started with phase one, is, is going forward as we speak. Um, I believe that phase five is supposed to complete sometime around August. It's going out in conjunction with CPRS version 28, um, and we're, we're partnering with them for this, this phase deployment action. Great. Do you, do you know roughly how many sites you're in so far? We had, Grant, correct me if I'm wrong, but I, we had, a, I believe it was five field sites that we're testing, and so far I think we have three or four sites um, that have deployed in production as part of phase one. So somewhere around between seven and ten sites have, have it in production today. Is that right, Grant? That's right. That's right. We had, we had six, uh, six sites that we used as our, our test um, our test base, and they, they have been in production for <clears throat> some time, and and now we're rolling out. Um, I haven't looked at the uh, <clears throat> the schedule today to see how many people have installed, but by the end, by the end of this week, our first phase was supposed to be installed in production, and I think they're around. Um, I think they're around seven or eight production sites in that first phase. Yeah. This is Marcy Kaiser from North Carolina. Can you hear me? I don't think you Barely. 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 <laughs> no, 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 you're not. Project, project. <laughs> yes, go deeper. There. Now okay, you. I'm deeper. That'll help. I'm Marcy Kaiser from North Carolina. How are you? Good, Marcy. How are you? Good. Great. Okay, so I don't remember the correct word that the VA uses for regions. Visions. So um, we're very well associated with the Durham, North Carolina VA, and I wondered if you knew where they were in your rollout plan. Oh. If you, if you give me just a minute, I'll see if I can lift that up. Um, That's great. And the other thing, of course, you're going to give Dr. Antrus like these slides so that she can post them on World they're Vista. Trying, they're trying to record them. Just, Terrific. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, but I was a little bit distracted by trying to get the video working. Um, I wanted to address the issue of if we're talking about MOCA, about the availability of that software. Is this an open source uh, MOCA server? Is that open source? Yeah, the, the, the MOCA server software is open source, but the FDB product that is used by MOCA is not open source. And you communicate, uh, you, you communicate uh, externally with the, or do you have the database separate so that you communicate from MOCA to it? Or do you have, have does it integrated right into it tightly? It, it is fairly tightly integrated in that we we use the FTB diff APIs. So uh, FTB provides the database and the set of Java APIs that can be called to perform the order checks. And I suspect the uh, Java APIs are also um, proprietary, right? Yes, yes, they, they, they are closed source and they would probably be of no use even open source because they're probably closely tied to their uh, uh, database schema. Hmm. And I understand MOCA runs on Linux, correct? That is correct. Anybody else have any questions? Yes. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the FDB diff uh, calls that you're making, are you wrapping those in any way or are you just using the native APIs that uh, First Data Bank provides? Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure what you mean. We, we do, so, so the architecture actually is, is basically exposing a, a, a bunch of, FTP, of uh, web services um, that don't, you know, I mean, the, the web services themselves are not FTB specific. They, they, they're, you know, they talk about order checks and such. Um, and so, further down in the implementation, there, there's obviously going to be a place where, uh, uh, where you, uh, where you actually do the FTB API calls. But it, those, those calls are fairly well encapsulated. Okay, so you're. You're using the un, underneath the web services. You're using the native uh, drug information framework APIs. That is correct. Yes. And those web services are part of the. Uh, it's not part of the MOCA. I, I, I stepped in a little late, so I apologize. It's not part of MOCA itself, but that's part of your implementation. Those web services are things that you wrote for this project. Okay. Yes. 
And then, uh, I'm sorry, one other question. The CPRS 28 rollout that's being coordinated, is that because there is interaction between the two? Or is that just the way you guys are rolling it out? It, it's partly, it's, it's both, really. It's, it's because of the, the coupling between CPRS and, and the MOCA software. Um, they needed to go out somewhat together. There's, we're going about it as a phased deployment because there are such significant changes here, both for, for MOCA and as well as for the functionality introduced with CPRS version 28 that's, that's separate from MOCA. Those are two very big releases, and we were asked to go through a phased deployment of it um, to bring those things in gracefully, or at least in an attempt to. Thank you. Um, the, uh when we will want to go on the FTP site, uh, not the FTP, it's an HTTP now site, to look to see if MOCA is on there, what are we, what are we looking for? And do you know what uh, namespace it's in or something so that I'll know how to find it? I, I don't know that. Does anyone have this information? Unfortunately, I do not know how, how it's been packaged. Okay. Thanks. This is Marcy. I have another question. I think I noticed on your other slide that you're using cache. Is that correct? Uh, yes. The, um, the Healthy Web Service client uh, uses uh, cache web services for, for its implementation. Have you tested this with GTM? On, would you know? I'm sorry, I don't know what GTM is. Oh, GTM is kind of an open source moms. It's a product, right? My yeah. guess is the answer is no. Just looking at the architecture slide, it looks like you guys are using the built-in cache web services tools. Is that correct? They're part of the cache product. Right. Yeah, so it's a so it's vendor dependent. It's, it will only work with cache as the version of most. That's so cool. those of us who are using GTM on our platforms will have to replace your cache web services with some equivalent heuristic function. Right. Yes, please. <laughs> so I don't know if you could hear um, if you could hear Rick, but um, okay. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, more. it's it's very elegant. Um, I want to ask about another project, if it's okay. Unless I want to say, can we wait till we get through the other part of the presentation? Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to put you on mute again, or I'm on mute, and, and let you go forward. All right. Thanks. Let's go ahead and move into the pharmacy product system national summary, Russ, if you would. Sure. Just okay. unmuting my mic. Okay, uh, I was asked to address the, the impact that we're going to have on NDF when we plan to stop using it, kind of a timeline for how all that will happen. Uh, that's being addressed through the pharmacy product system. I'm going to give you a, a high-level timeline that shows some of the key points in the future where we'll go through different phases, and then I'll take you through a little bit more detail of what each of those mean. This is a very high-level vision of what pharmacy reengineering is setting out to do, kind of showing a timeline for PEX, for MOCA, for PPSN, and then for dealing with different aspects, our inventory, and different domains of administering, recording, dispensing medication. Now, these stars here represent key points for when the national drug file use is affected. Uh, one is at the end of the deployment of PPSN 1.0, another is after PPSL 1.0, the PPS stands for Pharmacy Product System. It's, it includes a database where we keep product data, and it also includes an interface to update it. The N is for national. The L is for local. I think it will be clear what those mean on the coming slides. So let's go ahead and we'll look at these four major points of how the national drug file gets affected. This is where we currently are. We have our national drug file. Through a patching process, it goes out to our local copies of the national drug file via the MDF management system and PDM. Those are updated. Then we have apps that draw on that data. 
during that patching process, it results in external notifications about updated uh, data. Right now, we get our updates through an NDDF CD that is processed through our NDF management system. Before those external notifications go out, it's scrubbed to make sure none of the proprietary data is sent out. We don't really see this external notification process going away. It'll just probably change where it's spawned from. So let's take a look at that first major transition point, which hits about 2013. This is where we've deployed PPSN. And essentially, what PPSN does at this stage is it runs the show of making the changes to the national drug file, but it syncs through the NDF management system. And so to all the users at this point, it looks as if everything's the same as it is right now. There's still the patch process that updates the local sites, drugs files. There's still the external notifications that come out as part of that process. The only difference is now we're starting to build an enterprise product list database, more of a relational instead of a hierarchical method. Now let's fast forward to our next flashpoint, 2015. At this point, we're now starting to work on how do we update the local sites with the feature of the pharmacy product system called PPSL, or local. It makes the updates directly to them for the national drug files as well as the local drug files. At this point, that master copy of that national drug file and the patching process are no longer used, but the external notifications would come from the PPSN system itself. We still have those national drug files at the local sites because we have the apps that are dependent on that data. Now we'll fast, fast forward a little bit. Just showing that the national drug file, that master one, has now gone away. Hitting 2017. Now we're starting to migrate some of these apps that are dependent on the data so that they're drawing their data straight from this enterprise product list database instead of from the local site's national drug files. About 2017 or so. And then as we continue, Eventually, we migrate all of them, and now these local sites, national drug files, and local drug files in VISTA are no longer necessary. External notifications are still sent out, but they're sent out again from our pharmacy product system. At this point, there are no more national drug files, but the data that they contain is still housed. It's just housed over in this EPL database, and the notifications can still be sent. The data can still be sent. It just comes from a different system. Any questions on the four points that we've looked at for how the national drug file will eventually be migrated out of use? Your pharmacy product system is this, the MOCA part. I'm, I'm trying to understand what that is, and is that going to be something that's open source also? It's, this is different than MOCA. This is really a product of its own whose sole purpose is to replace where the data is stored and how that data is updated. Now, whether it's open source or not, I, I'm not really sure on the answer to that. Mike, do you have any insight? Yeah, the, the software will be open source just as the Vista software is today. Um, of course, anything that we use with, with FDB, for example, or one of these commercial products, would not be open source, but the Java code is going to be written to support the PPSN product. That's going to be open source just like the, the existing Vista code is. Oh, and what are you using for that relational database? Right now it's Oracle. Right. For the local sites, there's still debate as to whether that will be handled through Oracle instances or via cache. That still needs to be determined when we get to PPSL. That was a decision at the national level for the VA architecture where they, they had specified that Oracle would be used for the national level and then Cache would be used for the databases at the local level. We expect that probably is going to stay in place, but as Russ as said, it's still not, not finalized as far as the local system. Okay. I, I have, I'd like to ask a business uh, question, if I might. So we're looking, and I mean it with all great respect. Uh, we're looking at a very long-term plan, it's an excellent plan. Um, we do need to confer with um, Dr. Answersight on the um, proprietary pieces that, that people outside the VA just cannot afford, but we'll let Nancy handle that offline. 
But my question is, with such a long project, um, are you guaranteed in some way funding to continue this effort? There are no guarantees. And I, um, we do have, and I'm sure Mr. Baker is going to be speaking to you later today, I understand, but we do have his full support. Um, we have been successful in our delivery so far under the, the PMAS system, and we do expect to go forward. We, we've um, been communicating our budget needs for the out years um, forward through the OMB 300 process, and all indications are that we are we are going to continue. The business is satisfied with the progress we're making. They're very supportive of us. Uh, you know, nothing is ever nothing is ever certain. But right now, I think we're in as good a shape as, as anyone else as far as stability and our our ability to move forward. We've got a good plan, and you're delivering. So that that should help you yeah, make that's, support. That's, Thank I think you. that's it. We we have a, a pretty solid plan, or at least we we believe it is. We've we've been delivering so far. And as long as we are able to continue doing that, I expect we will go forward. Thank you. Um, if I could go back to the question um, one of the participants had as far as the install for Durham. They are part of Group 5, and they are to begin installing first in their test account starting right around the middle of June. Excellent. I have a question. This is Rick again. I have a question. Um, outside the VA, it's going to vary whether people want to use Oracle or whether they want to use First Data Bank or whether they want to work some other kind of workaround system. Would it be possible as we as we go forward, such that when when the uh, pharmacy project decides that the VA should stop using the NDF and stop using the local file, that they not delete the data dictionaries or the options or functionality, so that that way we're still on the same code base even for those non-VA uh, adopters who who aren't using the uh, the EPL per se. That is to say, in the same way that IHS and VA have to maintain a certain amount of redundant um, features in order to maintain a, a common code base between the two of them, would the VA be willing to do that for the non-federal uh, community to avoid a schism uh, in the pharmacy package? You're asking if we would be able to leave the existing NDF data dictionaries options and those things out there? Yeah, and just not use them, you know, or disable them in VA, but, but leave them for the, for the non-federal folks who need them. Well, those are certainly going to be around at least for, for several more years um, until we, as I understand it, until we've completed work on the, the local portion of PPS and have it fully deployed. Um, honestly, I don't know. I yeah, think I'm that's interested thing if, that's, if that's helpful. I don't know what the impacts would be on us, um, but it's something that we can certainly consider doing. What I'm concerned about is I want to make sure that the, the non-federal VISTA adopters don't end up forking off and ending up with a different version of VISTA that gradually becomes less and less compatible. Yeah, I understand what you mean there. Thanks. Thanks. Mike, okay, I'm going to speak. You might want to speak to, you know, the the FDB portion, which is the most immediate um, issue that that they would have right now. Of of things getting uh, the functionality disappearing, you mean, and not being uh, preserved. Right. Um, well, when Roger comes, I'm sure we're going to bring that up, yeah. and hope that we get heard so that 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 can put get put in the plans. And I'm hoping the fact that there's a CA RFP out there that that will help too. But we know how that is. Um, I think we have one more question. Did you want to ask? A question, Martin. Well, I will not frame it well, so I gave the, it to the, Ben. The question is really about how how you're coupling the not only the database interaction with Oracle or Cache, and it sounds like given your your local sites may be using Cache as their data store, it sounds like you probably have loose coupling there that would allow us to use different databases externally. But similarly, the coupling to the first data bank APIs, I mean, my, my previous question, I think, kind of answers that. Your wrap, you have web services that you've built that then wrap the, the drug information framework. Um, but I, I presume those are somewhat tightly coupled to the services that the DIF provides. Um, I don't think I really have a question in there, but I think I, think I kind of know your, the answer okay. to your question, Marcy. All right, so, so my question may be a request. I think it's a request. 
You could do our whole country. I, we have 14 facilities in the great state of North Carolina that are so excited about using VISTA. So that's just one example. There's many states with, with many, many facilities. This is wonderful for us. It's free. But we need our databases to be free, too. And so if you could design everything you do in a way that makes it easy for us to take what you have done, which is so very elegant, and pop out any proprietary databases or subscriptions and pop in um, open source or another method. So is that a clear request? It's not. It's English, not technical. Certainly understand the, the desire there and the need for that. The, the reality is that these databases are, are substantially different in the way that they present the data and the way that you access that data. So we've tried to keep those couplings as loose as, loose as we could while still being able to implement this sort of functionality. I mean, there's, for example, the FDB diff product has a number of standard APIs that you can use to pull these order checking information back um, for the MOCA functionality. And that's quite different than, you know, none of these vendors really have a standard way of providing that data. So in order to do what you're saying, there, there would be a substantial amount of work to bring in another source for these drug information and services to support the MOCA product. Um, I don't know that there's much more we could do to loosen that coupling and still be able to provide that functionality. But that's something that we are somewhat sensitive to with the you know, reality is we have to, to somehow be able to pull that data from the FDB product in this case, the product that our business had, had um, recommended for purchase and implementation here. And if you try to pull in something else, there is going to be some substantial coding that will be, will be required to do that. Yeah, this is Rick. I, I, I follow what you're saying. It makes good sense. Maybe the easiest thing to do, rather than requiring any architectural changes on your side, would be if you could just include, along with the standard documentation you send, somewhere in the technical chapter that just lists where the type company is, what are, what are the specific calls that are used that bind you, um, then it doesn't. Then it's not your problem anymore. Then the, the rest of us can worry about, you know, how do we swap out the the, the calls you've identified? You mean that actually describe the, the specific in, inputs and outputs from the 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 calls we make to the disk? Yeah, yeah. Because I mean, that's the sort of thing you'll have at the tip of your fingers anyway from having just done it. So it'll be easy to capture, and it'll save us God knows how much time. I don't, do we have Do we have any of that information in our documentation now, um, Ron? Do you know, Alex? I don't think Ron. Go ahead, Ron. Uh, just just speaking from the Vista end of things, we we have a uh, we have a a pretty complete um, guide that we use that details all inputs and outputs that, that we use on the Vista end. We don't have it published yet because it wasn't quite in good enough shape. We need to go through it again. Our plan, I believe, is to go and make sure that it's you know, all correct before we go and publish it. You know, on the video. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, I mean, if we just treat the first data bank the same way we treat any other VISTA package and treat your calls as though they're data based on database integration agreements, you know, that kind of minimal level of documentation would be adequate, I think, for us to, to figure out how to plug in something else if we had to. I mean, I'm sure a lot of non-federal adopters will go with first data bank, but I know some of them won't. I'm, I'm, when we, you are yes, able to get hands yes. on that documentation, take a look at it, and if you have some, some suggestions on how we might improve it as we go forward, certainly pass those on back to us. Oh, that'd be great. We'd love to review that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right. We're going back on mute, so you can go ahead. Um, Mike, I think uh, that kind of ended the presentation portion. Yeah, I think that, that was it. Um, that's what we had prepared for the, the presentation today to give you an idea of, you know, where we're going with the MOCA product specifically and, and also our plans for, for PPSN and beyond. Um, that's all we have as far as the, the, the formal presentation that we've come up with. Are there any other questions in general before we end this session? I think you probably addressed this just before I walked in. and It looked to me like the diagrams that I saw from the, the very beginning of the presentation was the order, the drug-drug interaction checking that's occurring at the pharmacy, within the pharmacy package, is the same that's occurring uh, in CPRS. Is that correct? Same, same, 
wasn't using the same exact checks? Yes, I believe that is the case. That's the CPRS makes that sends the input to the pharmacy application, and we, we, we pretty much do it. We, we call FDB and then return the information to CPRS. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, guys. That was, that was great. That was really what we needed today. Thank you very, very much. Very good. Glad we could help. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.